bugs. Creepy, crawly, and absolutely essential to life on Earth. Most people try to avoid them, but I've always done the opposite. My name is Jason Miller, naturalist and professional bug nerd. My mission is to inspire curiosity about the most underappreciated and misunderstood animals on the planet and inspire action to preserve and protect them. We may not always love bugs, but we definitely need them. Want to know how? Then let's get bugging. What is a bug? That's a complicated question. The word bug doesn't sound all that scientific, but it's an effective label for the countless invertebrate species that we share this bizarre, beautiful planet with. If we wanted to get technical, we could say, this program will observe and investigate a variety of insects, arachnids, myriapods, isopods, and gastropods. But to conserve precious syllables, we'll stick with the word bug. In order to get a better idea of how important bugs are, we need to start at the beginning. I'm talking over 500 million years ago, during one of the most important chapters in life's evolutionary history, the journey from sea to land. Bacteria was first, followed later by plants and fungi. But of course, nothing lives forever. As dead organic matter, or detritus, began piling up on land, aquatic bugs that fed on detritus underwater had a reason to come onto shore for the first time. The ancestors of millipedes and centipedes were first, followed later by other bugs who were interested in eating all this garbage. But of course, wherever prey goes, predators are never far behind, and the ancestors of scorpions and spiders took full advantage of the bug buffet that was colonizing dry land. For about 30 million years, bugs were the only animals living out of the water. It's a period of time that experts refer to as Jason's favorite. And bugs weren't only the first animals to walk on land, they were also the first to develop flight, defy gravity, and take to the skies. To add a bit of context here, bugs made the journey from sea to land to sky, all while our ancestors were still doing whatever fish did back then, together. These organisms reshaped the landscape and created a lush new domain for other animals to eventually explore and evolve in. A domain with plenty of food for the herbivores and plenty of food for the carnivores. What? It's a compliment. I'm saying that you're essential. You are so sensitive today, man. This is just like earlier we were watching that movie and you got so offended in the scene where... And you're interrupting me? You're gonna interrupt me on my own show. I'm talking about how essential you are to the food web and about how, I'm sorry, excuse us for a second. You're making both of us look bad right now. And you know what? You're being a pest. I'm sorry, shouldn't have said that. That's, I was out of line. Are we good? Cool, do you wanna play in the compost? Okay. As I was saying, bugs have been around for quite a long time. Today, they can be found in almost every habitat on all seven continents, even Antarctica, see? Insects alone make up over 80% of the known animal species. This many bugs in this many places tells us there must be a reason. To be blunt, it's the circle of life. Without bugs as a food source, a huge number of species would go extinct by starvation. And animals that eat bugs aren't the only ones that benefit. Many bugs, like earthworms, are decomposers. They eat detritus and then compost comes out the other end. That compost is a nutrient-rich food source for plants. So decomposers feed the plants that feed herbivores. And those herbivores are then prey for carnivores. We'll be right back. It begins with the war-born development of DDT, 
This diabolical weapon of modern science saved millions of humans, but killed billions of insects. Man, with this newly discovered force, has at long last gained the upper hand in our age-old struggle. Just like these mosquito larvae, we have no defense. No longer can ants, for example, have things pretty much their own way as they've always had down through the ages. Welcome back. Sorry about that. All right, this example should be a bit less traumatic. This is the food web. It shows how different organisms obtain food and obtain energy. Carnivores eat herbivores, herbivores eat plants, plants get energy from the sun, everybody dies and then gets eaten by detritivores. You get the idea. What's unique about modern humans is our ability to actively cut ties with parts of the food web while still heavily affecting other parts. This wasn't always the case. We used to actually help maintain this balance. In the early nomadic days of our species, we foraged for plants, we hunted for some animals, and we were hunted by other animals. But then we evolved, our brains got a few more wrinkles, and things changed. We built houses and weapons which kept us safe from predators. And we began farming, so we no longer needed to worry about hunting and gathering. But this presented a new problem. Our rolling fields of food crops proved to be irresistible to many insects. We unintentionally created an unnatural bug oasis with an abundance of food and a shortage of predators. As we continue to replace natural habitat with farmland, bugs kept bugging us. So, we clapped back with chemical pesticides like DDT. Checkmate, you dumb bugs. Calm down, I'm kidding. Of course, a mass bug genocide had a negative effect on the entire food web, not just the bugs. Luckily, thanks to environmentalist pioneers like Rachel Carson in the 1960s, DDT is no longer in use in the United States. But even with modern regulations, ecologically harmful pesticides are still being heavily used here in the US, even ones that are banned in other agricultural nations. I know, dude, it's crazy. Now you might be thinking, Jason, I see bugs all over the place. How can something so abundant be so vulnerable? We used to say the same thing about the ocean. It's so vast and full of life, there's no way human activity could ever damage it. Today we know better. In between plastic pollution, the climate crisis, and over-harvesting, the ocean is not the eternal wellspring that we once imagined it to be. The same is true for the bug biosphere. I know that appreciation for creepy crawlies is kind of a tough sell, but even if you're not quite ready to go hug a bug yet, the least you can do is toss out those pesticides, break that fly swatter over your knee, and stay tuned, because we are just getting started. I have a lot of bugs in my house. Big surprise, right? But here's the thing. You have a lot of bugs in your house too. The only difference is they're not in tanks. They're hiding in your walls, under your floors, under your furniture, in your pantry, even on your body. Don't worry though, we'll talk about that next time. Until then, I've been Jason, and we've been bugging. <laughs>